CC Light Burst 2.5 is found under the Generate category, and if I apply it to this photo of a prism, it'll generate these cool light streaks based on the brightness of the image. This is similar to a radial blur or even CC Light Rays, but Light Rays is much more focused on this point control. Light Burst is much more uniform across the entire image, but I can still move the point around where that radial blur is coming from. Let me get rid of light rays and we'll take a look at these controls. We've already seen that we can move this center point around to control where the rays are coming from. We have an intensity slider to increase or decrease the intensity of that brightness. And you'll notice this effect does take a bit of time to render. Down here, we're seeing the frame render time of 387 milliseconds. That's not too quick. It's lagging a bit as I adjust these properties. Set that back to 100. We have the ray length, which will increase or decrease the amount of blur on that radial blur without affecting the brightness. So intensity is kind of like brightness. Ray length is how much that blur is actually happening. So if I turn this ray length way down to say 20, we're barely gonna get any. And that actually did speed up my render time quite a bit. In fact, let me just turn this little snail guy on so we can see that right here a little bit easier. Intensity isn't increasing or decreasing that render time much but the longer the ray length, the more time it's gonna to take to render. So I could turn this down to a very low number and it doesn't take quite as long. But let me just reset that back to its default. Next up is the burst type and it's set to fade, but we can also change this to straight or center. So let me zoom in actually to where we can see these light rays nice and close. The fade burst type is going to blur the pixels from that center point, which let me just move that over here again. It's gonna blur the pixels from that point and fade them out as it gets further away from that point. Changing it to straight is going to blur those pixels from the center point again, but keep the strength the same. It's not fading out no matter how far out you go from the image. So again, fade and straight. And then we have center. And this kind of blurs it in both directions. It almost looks like we're zooming in rather than these rays being blasted out towards us. If I increase the ray length, you can see that it's blurring in both directions. But if I put it back on fade, then those rays are coming towards us, not moving away from us. So those are the three burst types. Let me reset this one more time. And next up we have Halo Alpha, and this is only going to work with an image that has an alpha channel, which this photo doesn't. So let me grab my logo here, and I'll apply light burst to it, turn off that photo so we can see it, and turn Halo Alpha on. And this is basically going to take the alpha channel of the logo, and apply the light burst to just a thin outline around the entire thing. So if I added a CC composite effect right after that and unchecked RGB only, now my logo is recomposited in front, but I wanna composite it behind so that these light burst rays are on top of my logo. Now, it's still a very subtle effect, so I'm gonna to need to turn up the intensity, but that's what Halo Alpha does. It just gives you those light rays around the edges of your alpha. And if I change my composite mode to add, then it's going to make those rays even a little bit brighter. I'll get rid of that CC composite and uncheck Halo Alpha. And if we say set color, this is going to allow us to tint those rays whatever color we want, ignoring the original colors. And that wouldn't do us any good on an image that doesn't have an alpha channel, because if I enable that, it's just going to fill the entire image with that color because we're throwing away the color data from that photo. But that's really everything you need to know about CC Light Burst 2.5. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.